In the first part of this video, we made two screens for an iPhone app. The first one was a loading page, which is customized with the logo and the name, and then the home landing page. So what we're going to do is take these skills and go a little bit further. This is beyond what we covered in the workshop because of time reasons, but if you're interested in taking your ideas further, doing a bit more advanced wireframing, then this is for you. Now, the thing to remember is that the skills we did in the first part in the actual workshop are the same skills, more or less, as we use in the second part. So I'm going to be doing a little bit less editing, a little bit less zooming in, because we've already shown what these areas are. However, everything is there in detail, everything's covered, and you can go back to part one, which is linked in the description below, and just go and if you have to do that. So this should be very achievable if you've already worked through part one. So here we are, and this is what we're going to do for. What we did, um, what I did previously is develop a few extra screens. So we've got a menu that's been opened up with um, so a menu uh, from the side that's giving our areas. Um, we've got a search box, we've got um, the expanded menus, we've got um, some product pages, a whole load of things, and then actually product page, so it's my product gallery. So I'm going to be going to create a few more of these. Now these might look a bit more advanced, a bit more involved than the landing page made the first time, but you'd be surprised how the skills completely get recycled and repeated, because actually wireframing is a relatively simple task. Um, the hardest bit is coming up with your great idea. So if you haven't yet seen the videos I've made about how to use design thinking to create your ideas, which is relevant to your sketchbook part of your coursework, please go and watch them and hopefully it'll be very useful. So, let's carry on with this. Let's go back to our page. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, a version of this with the search box opened. So, let's just take this. What we do is I'm going to just copy and duplicate this page. So, we've got the version above, which is there, and then we've got version below, so two of the same. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that I want to blur out the background. So what I'm going to do is go to my layers and put in a nice big white sheet. Now, that currently is nice and dark, so let's open up my swatches. Just call it white. Go to Windows, Effects, and let's just put color. Actually, not the color at all. Let's just reduce the transparency. So let's kind of go to about there. Now, what I can do next is I don't want it to be covering the top part of the bar. So I can just bring this down to about there. So a bit, a bit higher and do it piece by piece. And that kind of works. But I'll turn to where doing it. If bring it right down. If I hold down Control or Shift, or on a Mac Command and Shift, I can click on this back title bar. Oops, start with the uh, logo, click the title bar, and that brings these elements out from the master where we developed in part one, and brings it into the foreground so I can now play with it. Which means, if I take my rectangle and increase it to the full page size, go to my layers. Remember, if you can't find anything, just go Windows and you'll find it right there. So in layers, I can see my rectangles at the very top. Let's bring that right, let's keep it there actually, but let's bring the logo and title bar right to the top. So junk logo above. So now it's fully behind in the right place. We need to bring the search box area there and we need to bring a keyboard in. So what I've done is if I go to Open Adobe Illustrator, which we showed in part one. I zoom out a bit. I've just copied the search bar and keyboard out of this already, so it's ready to go. They're already on artboards, so I can go you know, just draw a nice box over there. File, export selection, go to artboards, make sure I've got search bar and keyboard exported, and save it to my desktop. I've already done this, so I can just skip over back to InDesign and go to my page, where am I? There I am. So file, place, and you just go, oops, Adobe is having a nice little um, headache. So there we are. Desktop, I've got keyboard and search bar. Just hold down shift, select both of them, click OK. You can see I've got two items on my 
uh, mouse by the fact I've got to number two next to it. So I'm just going to draw out number one to the keyboard and draw out number two just below there, which is my search bar. So I've got this there now. So I want to now put some search terms in there. So just going to take my text tool, draw out about there, and call it recent searches. That's far too small, so I'm going to just turn back onto normal mode because I'm get a preview. Select all of this. Let's go for San Francisco, which is the UI Fox, UI Fox, UI font for um, iOS. Let's go size 30. That looks good to me. And let's move that just to the side there. Double click the side to bring, snap it in there. And let's take this Alt, copy down and let's move it in slightly about there. So let's go retro. Let's go vintage, flower, tartan, love. I'm just writing because I know it goes down. Let's bring the white box down there. So I've got some recent terms. Right now this is working very well because we're using the same font style as the title. So I'm going to take this and go from bold to um, thin, then you see there is actually a difference. Looking at this, I can see that my white in the background is not quite white enough. So clicking on that, go to Windows, and then Effects. Take the opacity up to, yeah, that was quite good. So I'm going to be quite happy with that. So click on Preview, just there. We can see we've now got something. So we've gone from our landing page through to a version with search. And we can put a little cursor in as well if we like. Just, just draw a line to the side there. Open our swatches, click on pink, and click on pink there. Let's go for three points. So we've got a nice little pink line which suggests the cursor. So there we are. That is pretty good. So let's make something else. Let's go again and let's make the version with the menu which has been opened. So let's go back to our pages and again duplicate our landing page. There we go, duplicate spread. Down to the bottom you see it's there. And once again we want to bring the items to the foreground. So let's just do that. So we can now edit them. Select everything, right click and group. The reason why we are doing this is that I'm going to move everything over to the right. Let's turn on my normal mode again and have a look. I want my menu box to just be touching that 20 pixel border. So that's about right for me. So I've now shifted everything across. Now I want to have a background to this which is the same color as the title. So I'm just going to take a rectangle, draw it out here and that's about in line. Let's bring it up there. I don't want the color to be that kind of dark gray. So what I'm going to do is just select this, choose the eyedropper tool from the side, hover over this gray area there. Oops. Sorry. Take this and just select. Ah, oh, it's got one bit selected this way. Okay, so I got that selected. Go to my swatches. Oops, managed to duplicate things far too many times. So if I just take my picker, choose a color, and there we are. So that's going to give me a nice background. So what I want to do here is there's one thing that which is wrong. I've moved the title over to the right to the um, phone information bar. So what I'm going to do is just going to ungroup this and just copy it to the side, so it's over. Take the layers, bring this to the very top, and then take the blue handle and just bring it up to the top. So that's going to be covering up the bits we don't like. And if we look at preview, you can see that that looks relatively effective. So let's go back to the area. So we can do lots of things here. I'm actually going to leave it as it is, as far as um, for a search area. I don't think we actually need a search area inside this blue window. So I'm going to go ahead with the, with the um, titles. So keeping things together, I'm going to just copy out this clothes part and move it to the top here. There we are. But this time I want to have it left justified. I want to say shop. 
and that's great. Now that's going to be currently it's on size 60. I think it's pretty large. I think size 50 is going to be a bit more appropriate. So there we go. Move it down a bit as well. Move it in line with the bottom of the title. We don't need to say menu or anything. Um, so yeah, let's take that and now we'll copy it below and move it in a bit about there. Reduce our frame to there. We'll see why in a second. Take this and let's say clothes. And let's go from bold to mm, regular. Sounds good. And so clothes. We're also going to sell jewellery. The word I always find trouble spelling. And we're also going to be selling. We're going to be selling bags. Great. So what we're going to do here is make another category. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to put a line in just to make this look a bit fancy from this point to there. I think one point's enough. Just a little small grey underscore. So let's take these multiple elements, select them all, hold on Shift, hold on Alt, and just drag them down to about there. And we'll call this experience. So my account gallery or lookbook or whatever you prefer, store finder and not for the last one, copy this down, just there, blog. So that gives us our main areas and I want to put the logo of the company in the bottom, so file, place and the logo, I've got to go through all my lectures again, so digital branding, this year, lecture slides, week three wireframing. Uh, app size, images, branding, school junk, perfect. Let's just drag this out to about there, move it across so we've got something with the pencils pretty much in the middle. So that looks right to me. The thing I'm missing is I'm missing my chevrons and my plus signs. So I'm going to go back over to Adobe Illustrator. I've already copied them out here, but I'll do it again just to show you how to do it. So let's zoom in. We've got a chevron, plus sign, and a minus sign. So let's just take those, copy them. Oops. Be a bit careful sometimes with the smaller ones, otherwise you can do weird stuff. Let's take that, let's take the chevron, which is nice and blue, and let's also take the plus sign. Right, so there we are. And we need to change their colours. So our plus sign, I want to be pink, so let's just have a look at our swatches. Just click on the pink, the blue, so we've got fill, so we've got um okay, keep that to blue, and the line, it's just a line actually, it's a stroke, so we're gonna choose pink for that again. So that's our standard thing we're gonna be choosing. So let's take this and command C, command so copy, head back to Adobe InDesign and paste. And we'll see it's appeared in the middle there, it's looking very small. So what we're gonna do is stretch it out so it's fitting roughly the size of the text box that's going to be our guide for today. Let's take this and stick it, let's put it there and just drag it down with alt selected so that we're copying it all the way down. So these ones are going to have crosses, actually they're a bit big, let's make them a bit smaller. Let's go for say that size. So move it again and again and again, so we've got our three crosses. That looks a bit better than it did last time. Make sure they're centered. That's cool. So now we're going to do the same for the chevrons. Back into Illustrator. Choose my chevron. Copy. Into InDesign. Paste. Once again, very small. So we're going to be expanding its size to about that size, splitting it round, moving just to the right and dropping this in line. So you see the guides start appearing? That is about perfect. So hold on, I'll just drag it down so we bring it in line. So we've got our chevrons. 
So there we have our menu. It's been opened up. Let's have a look at preview to see how it's going to look when it's printed. And I'm very happy with that. So let's go and make the next level, which is the expanded version of this. So once again, back into normal mode, back into pages, and we duplicate what we've just made. There's no point doing more work when we actually need to. We select all the elements that we're going to have. Hold on shift, remove the background. And let's also choose that, the bag, the jewelry, and the plus. What we're going to do is I'm going to group them together just because it keeps everything together, makes it very easy to work with, and just move it down. Probably about that far is absolutely fine. Take my clothes one, copy it down to about there, reduce my size, and I'm going to change from regular to thin and say men's, and obviously. women's. So what I've done here is you can see that the font size is the, the font is the same, so San Francisco, the size is the same, so that's 0.50, but I've gone from bold to regular to thin, and I've gone from all caps to first letter cap to no capitals. So I'm using two kinds of changes in the way I'm presenting the text to indicate that we're talking about a different level of hierarchy here. So it's a little way to really help your user know what's going on. If everything was the same, the same font, same size, same um, weighting, all just five left, etc., then it'd be hard to see what's going on. But this way, it's very easy to see what's going on. So change I've got to make is I've got to remove that plus. I'm gonna ungroup this stuff take a chevron, hold an alt, bring it up here, line it up, copy it up, alt, yep, and now we need to put a minus there. So once again, back into Adobe Illustrator, take our minus, copy, back into InDesign, over here, and paste. Once again, it's quite small, but because this is a stroke rather than a object, I'm just going to increase the stroke up here. So let's take it to, I think three is about right. And that is perfect. So what we have here, if we lock it on to preview, is we have um, a structure that makes sense. So when you click on it, the hierarchy opens, changes from a plus to a, to a minus. So to close it, press the minus again. The chevrons clicking to the right are indication we're going to this page, so it's not going to subcategory. So there's a few things here that really help the user understand what's going on. Looking at this version, I think that the pluses, the minuses, and the chevrons are too large. We need to make them smaller. But this is the whole thing. Once you start visualizing it, you can really start to see what's going on and go, I can see we should be doing this. So that is very good. I'm going to do one last thing. I'm going to make a category page, and this is very easy to do. So we're not going to just do another copy, we're going to do a brand new page. So we click here at the bottom, click on the new page, and there it is. It's got the A te template in, which again, we like, it's very useful. And I'm just going to jump in here. So we're going to do it for jewellery. So let's start by just nick nicking one of the titles from here. So experience, let's move it down there, pressing Alt again. Let's call this jewellery. And do I want to go capitalize it? Mm, no, let's keep it at that, which is a very similar kind of idea to what we've got going on around here. But I want to colorize it, so let's make it pink. So just go for swatches, click on pink, and that's looking quite funky. Actually, you know what? I will capitalize it. That's cool. So we need to put some pictures in. What we do is go to our frame tool, which we use quite a lot in the start and just draw out a frame, a rectangle, like so. Then you tap once right, and you'll see that's created two boxes. So dragging out to there, make it about that big, and I'm happy. Thinking about it, I want to have an underline. I'm gonna take this thing, copy it down here. Just move it to there, so it start just under, and going right to the edge of the page. So that's gonna give me quite an interesting little underscore. So a small little feature that you do actually see in the iOS 10, um, format. So we've got our pictures, we'll go there, we'll do that in a second. Let's just take a title. Once again, I'm going to take uh, one of these things, Do blog would work nicely. So just copy down here. Do not be afraid of completely recycling what you're doing, because frankly, it's how it works. Now, 
I can just drag this out and it'll take it out the middle. I can copy it again, and put one there. Let's put a price in. This item is going to be, I don't know, £24. £34, fair enough. And I'm going to right align it. So let's just keep that there, open up our area. I'm going to remove the bold, well, it's not bold, it's regular, and go for light on the price and go for some medium on the title. So I'm going to call this Dreams. And what this does is that you're putting more weight on the actual title of the item and less weight on the price. So you're less likely to scare the, the customer. We could go a bit further and go from light to thin. Again, putting less emphasis on the actual price of it and more what it actually is because the name will communicate things. So let's copy these, take it over and just drop it right there. So we've created something. Take all of this, right click, group. Again, just makes things a bit easier and nice and neat. Hold down Alt, drag it down, and let's put it there. Do it one more time, and you'll see that when you get to close to the area, that you've got little green marks you just about to see, telling you that the gap's the same. I managed to miss out, out of the bit, so just move it down there. Right, and now I've got some placeholders, got my text, got my titles, I just got to put some pictures in. So let's go and navigate to that now. So in file, place, let's get out of branding, go to the shop, I'm going to choose jewellery, and next is not quite enough there. I think we've got some good earrings. Yep, these are good. Select all of them, click open, and I've got six pictures on my cursor. So let's just hover over and click once inside, oops, Control Z, puts it back on the thing once inside each of those frames. Now what we'll do is make sure they fill the frame nicely. So click on the center box, make it go brown, expand, move it around a bit, that's right. This one here, center, let's really bring this right down to there. That looks good. These I'm relatively happy with, a bit bigger maybe. These ones are okay. This one down there is okay, but these two can be built a bit more. Just move that up actually, make it nice and easy. So I've now filled in my areas. Now let's rename this. So dream, let's just call it Fox Crown Feather Home. So one thing you've got to think about is when you are designing your interface, you need the titles to all fit in. So find the longest title word that you have in your category, put it in there and make sure it fits. If it doesn't, adjust the fonts, but do it all over the app. Don't just do it for one page. You want to have universal typology, typography even. But I'm pretty happy with that. Let's go and have a look at the whole series altogether using the preview. So loading page made in part one, the landing page from part one, the search page from today it looks quite nice and maybe the font there's too small we probably need to be working a bit um, closer to the rest of them you know what? I'm going to change this now let's make the size 50 yep you can see it's needs to expand this a bit make this size 50 during your prototyping stage of this it's completely fine to make changes um, it's but make sure you document them Recent searches, retro. Yeah, that works quite nicely, and that's the same font. So I'm going to go for a 50 is a universal throughout the app because that's going to make it feel quite nicely together. Yep, that's all good. So we've got our a menu from the side, we've got the areas expanded, and you'll see that little icon that's moved down as I put areas there. And we've got a category page. So as you can see, I've moved a lot faster in this tutorial, but I've used the same skills, more or less, as part one. So if you can do part one, you can do part two, and you can find ways to visualize your designs.